Hey there, welcome to the third and final installment of my Frozen themed birthday party prep video series. For those of you guys who are new here, hello, my name is Emily. I am the mother of two little kids, Aubrey, who just turned four, and little baby Jack, who is almost nine months. I make videos on kind of all things mom here on my channel, and in this video, we are covering the decorations that I made for my daughter's fourth birthday party. So let's get to it. So let's go ahead and get started by using some chalk paint pens to do some decorating around the house. I was kind of inspired by our many trips to Starbucks, how they use like chalk paint to kind of decorate the little window separating you from the bar. And I figured I would draw some snowflakes on our sliding glass door. I made some really big elaborate ones kind of inspired from different pictures I saw online. Then I made just kind of little like, you know, five stem stars or six stem stars and drew some dots around the rest of the door. I also let Aubrey give it a go and she just kind of focused on two little areas on our door. So I was just gonna leave it like this with the snowflakes, but then I had an idea to use my pin the nose on Olaf little decoration and I traced Olaf on the other side of the glass, which was kind of difficult because it was so thick. But anyways, I used um, my whiteboard markers that I had on hand, an orange chalk paint pen, and my white one to just kind of trace him out. Then I obviously took the pin the nose on Olaf you know, sign off the door and left it like that. And I really liked how it added the frozen touch to my decoration. Moving on, we are going to be making a bathroom sign. This is my favorite line from the movie. It's when Anna is singing, don't know if I'm elated or gassy, but I'm somewhere in that zone. And I thought that this would be the perfect way to identify the bathroom door in our house. So I moved like a little wreath that I had just, I wanted it to be, I don't know, prettier than just the sign and hung it on the wreath on our bathroom door. Next up, we are using the same chalk paint pen to write on our bathroom mirror another quote that I felt was fitting for the bathroom. Let it go, let it go, can't hold it back anymore. <laughs> I I'm really proud of these two quotes because I was like you know, inspired by a lot of things online, but this is something I came up on my own. And of course it has to be, you know, bathroom related, but anyways, I thought it was funny. Other people thought it was funny. I drew some snowflakes on the mirror as well and just kind of decorated the bathroom that way. You know, it just added that extra little frozen theme touch to the bathroom and, you know, brought some humor to people's days as well. All right, so enough with the chalk paint pen. We are now going to be doing some little crafts. I wanted to kind of create this abstract looking tree using Mod Podge and white yarn and this thing, this foam thing that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. I think I probably could have done a much better job with this tree, but I wasn't gonna invest as much time into this <laughs> as it probably needed to be, uh, just because I had so much other stuff going on. But I wrapped the foam thing from Dollar Tree with saran wrap, then decked out the yarn with kind of glue and wanted it to kind of hold its shape. 
it worked. It wasn't the best thing. And then I decided to use the foam little cone from Dollar Tree and I decided just to hot glue a bunch of yarn on there, either just the basic yarn or I braided the yarn and tried to make an abstract looking decoration tree thing. It ended up working out and I used these to decorate the bathroom. I did end up spraying this tree with some like spray glue from the Dollar Tree. I think it kind of gave a little bit of a textured look and I wanted just to hold all of the yarn, you know, in its place. So that's what I used. Again, these weren't like my favorite crafts, but they kind of added to the frozen theme in the bathroom. Let's move on to my glass board art. So this is something that I'd like to do every party is decorate my glass board. And I was originally planning on like projecting the image of Anna or Elsa up and just kind of tracing it out or shining a light through like a cutout printout thing. And then I just figured, you know what? I'm just gonna use my Cricut. I have a Cricut, might as well use it. If you don't have a Cricut and you have a whiteboard you want to decorate, you can always use those ideas to like project an image and trace it out to create something that maybe looks better than what you could just do just freehand. So anyways, I went super cheap on this party and used Dollar Tree wood grain vinyl to cut out these images, but I didn't want them to look like wood on the glass board. So I colored over them using Sharpie because I didn't want to waste the money using my nice black vinyl. And I actually prefer this method <laughs> when I'm doing something that is just gonna be used once and then like trashed after the fact. It actually ended up looking like I drew on these images onto my glass board because of the Sharpie, you know, coloring over the wood grain. So it made it look like I did more work than I actually did. <laughs> so there was an added benefit to make it look a little bit more hand-drawn, but that wasn't really what I was going for. Sometimes I'm selfish, get jealous. I feel a little helpless. My whole world has shifted again. You made a promise, I kept it. No, I'm second guessing my whole I did end up rewriting the word birthday because I noticed it was a little bit like shorter at the beginning and got taller. So I did end up editing this. You may notice a slight difference when the party is all set up. But anyways, I did this a number of days before the party to reduce my stress and I just admired it <laughs> in those days leading up to the party. It was just one of my favorite decorations. Next up, we are making a curly willow table skirt out of plastic table covers from either the Dollar Tree or Walmart. I think Walmart now is a better deal than Dollar Tree since they raise their prices. So the first thing you wanna do is unwrap your table cover and don't unwrap it all the way, just unwrap it like immediately from the package lengthwise. And you're gonna cut squares about two fold lengths long. And pretty much this should come out like an even amount of squares. Like there shouldn't be like half of a square left over. Once you get to the end of the table cover, you should be like a square's worth. So you go ahead and, and cut those out into like a very large, as large of a circle as possible. I kind of did a squircle, square circle. It really doesn't matter. So just cut a squircle if you want. And then you're gonna cut a spiral from the outside all the way to the center of the square. Um, or your squircle, I mean. And I would suggest doing um, like a spiral that's two inches thick. And I say this because the first one that I did was like an inch thick and it was super long. One piece was like four table heights long. <laughs> um, and so gluing it onto my table tape later on was a little bit more tedious and they were very thin ruffles. So you want 
thicker ruffles, so I would suggest doing like a two inch thick spiral. Next up, I covered my table in, I think it's a six foot table, with a plastic table cover and used tape to tape along the perimeter of the table or like the side of the table. And on this tape is where we're gonna be gluing our little ruffles. Now I put the tape here because I thought that the hot glue would probably melt the plastic table cover that I put on the table. So the um, tape is kind of serving as a you know, heat barrier there. And you just glue on the ruffles. I did white and blue, so I alternated. And then I also had to alternate like the sizes. I didn't want all the skinny, tiny ruffles on one side and you know, whatever. So with the two inch thick spirals ruffles that you cut out, I still had to fold them in half and glued like the halfway point to the tape on my table. But that gave it kind of even more ruffles um, and even more ruffly look. And at the beginning, I was gluing them pretty close together because I this was the first time I've ever done this, and I actually ran out of blue table covers. So you really don't need to glue them that closely together on the tape. You can kind of space them out even more, and I think four table covers would be enough to cover the three sides of the table. But because I was, you know, started off a little too close together, I did run out of blue and I had to break into one more table cover to finish off the sides of the table. Next up we are assembling our balloon arch. I bought a pack off Amazon for the balloons and I already had the little arch kit on hand from previous parties. I like to first lay out all of the balloons that I have, organize them by size, and then one thing that I do like to do while I'm assembling balloon arches is if there's any small balloons, I blow them up first, put them in a bag, save them for later. These are the ones that I'm going to stick on with like little double-sided stickers that come with the balloons. And then once those are kind of bagged and put away, kind of create my groups of four that are gonna go together on my balloon arch and try to kind of, if I'm doing like a random look, I try to order them in a random way so that I don't have to really think about it later on and I'm not blowing up all the balloons and then trying to find like one random balloon floating around the room. Here I can blow up four, assemble it, put it on the pole, and then do the next four and it just makes it a whole lot easier on me. But this is my little technique for assembling a balloon arch. Next up, we have this Anna and Elsa balloon and banner. I picked it up at Walmart when I was doing some grocery shopping and thought it would work well above our kitchen sink. Hanging the balloon was a little difficult. These pieces of tape were not quite good enough to hold up the thing, so I used some like very thin string and looped it around the snowflake and then taped it to our cabinets. 
So next up, we have these paper like origami Christmas trees that I made. I made a lot of these and I will be putting like a full walkthrough tutorial on my crafting channel if any of you guys want to replicate this. I tried my best and then I realized, oh, I did the walkthrough with like white paper, but I think you can still kind of follow along. So that will be posted on my crafting channel if you you know, really want to replicate this tree and can't seem to follow what I'm doing on the screen here. But I made a lot of these and it was tedious work, but I really think it added an extra special touch to my table decorations. I did some uh, green ones and like white ones and had those on my island where I kept all the food. And then at the dessert table and like treat table, that was kind of more purple and blue themed. So I did some purple and blue Christmas trees as well. So if you watched my previous video, you saw um, that there was like almost a full Amazon gift card code. And here is the last little bit that you guys need. Again, this is just to say thank you to you guys for supporting and watching my channel. Obviously, I can't give a card to everyone. So this is just whoever claims it first gets it. But just know that I would really love to just thank you guys and give everyone one if I could. Um, you guys really mean a lot to me. I love the community that's like following what I'm doing and you guys just are the best. Um, I really appreciate you. So again, this is just kind of whoever claims it first. Congratulations. Let me know down below in the comments if you are the lucky person that the code worked for. But if not, I invite you guys to make sure you guys are subscribed with notifications on and that way you won't miss any of my videos where I might do this again soon. I can play the game but I'm falling again. No, don't hold back. Take it far. Promise you the same. Let the pleasure be So we can do my place Maybe we can try Beating up by seven You'll be saying oh I saw it's guaranteed I'll be forever thinking about you and me So a couple days before the party, I actually took out like all of the serveware that I envisioned using for the party and put it on my island. I even took like a panoramic photo so that I would know where everything went. Like I really wanted to save like time and my sanity the day of the party. So here I was able to kind of like practice or kind of see where everything fit. And then that way the day of the party, I could assemble everything really quickly and referred to my picture and it just, you know, worked really nicely. But you can also see like I even prepped where I thought the trees would work best as well. So next up, we are going to be making a variety of paper snowflakes just using basic copy paper. And hopefully you guys will be able to kind of follow what I'm doing on the screen. I'm cutting a square. So this is an eight and a half by eight and a half inch square, folding it diagonally and then folding it uh, in half from there. I'm showing you guys kind of how I'm holding this as I cut slices, but not all the way. So like I'm cutting it down and leaving about like a half an inch thick and then creating like another cut here so that when we open it up, we have, you know, this whole thing still attached, but it has little slices and we're going to tape alternating pieces together in one direction and then the remaining pieces in the other direction. So here I'm taping like the center piece together and then the outermost piece together, just kind of at like the very tip of the little 
pieces of paper. And then the center piece, I'm gonna tape on the other side so that it creates this kind of cool looking part of a snowflake. And we're gonna repeat this process a number of times until we have three of these completed to make one half of the snowflake and then do it again to create the second half. So once you have those three pieces, you staple the tips together, make sure that the pieces are all kind of facing in the same direction. And then as you guys can see on the screen, I just taped the individual pieces together as well. I repeated the process, made the second half of the snowflake, and then taped the pieces of the snowflake together from the first half to the second half. This was a very sturdy paper snowflake. The next one I'm gonna be making is not as sturdy and much more flimsy. So when I did display it, I had to use slightly more tape to make it look nice. So as you guys can see, I folded my uh, square that I cut in half diagonally and I'm cutting one inch thick um, strips all the way down, but leaving about a half an inch. And here again, I'm gonna be taping together um, every other piece in one direction, and then I'm gonna flip it around and tape again every other piece together in the other direction to create my like one sixth of my snowflake. We're gonna repeat the process three times, secure it by staples, and use some tape to kind of hold the pieces a little bit better together. So as I mentioned in my last video, my goal for this party regarding the party prep was to try to not spend too much money. There were some things that I did buy that were frozen themed that I just really either didn't have the time or the creativity to make myself. Uh, but I really wanted to do things that you know, used items that I had on hand and copy paper is definitely something that most of us have on hand. This was a very elaborate decoration and it really didn't cost that much or really take that much time. If there isn't a channel already out there called Bougie on a Budget, I feel like that could be the title of a new channel that I could create because I'm just trying my best to go all out for this party but still not, you know, spend an arm and a leg. So with the more sturdy snowflakes, the first ones that I made, I am taping one of the tips of the snowflakes with tape, cutting a little hole and tying a string to it and then suspending it from where we hope to eventually have pendant lights. So it was kind of nice to have like that pendant light feel <laughs> before we actually get them to see like what it would feel like in our house. And I did have my Cricut cut out some other more elaborate snowflakes and I taped those to the string. And then I'm also going to be hanging these guys from our lights that line our hallway.
So I really liked hanging these from the hallway because we had some people like family that hadn't been to our house yet. And if they were asking where the restroom was, I was like, just follow the snowflakes. <laughs> so they knew to keep following these snowflakes down our hall. And then I hung a big one outside the bathroom. And then the bathroom again um, had the gassy or elated <laughs> sign. And you know, it was easy for them to find our restroom. With the other remaining big snowflakes that I made, we taped them to our window on the outside of our house under the patio cover. And again, we had to use slightly more tape with the more flimsy snowflakes, but I do still think that it turned out really nice. Next up, we are making some little fake snowballs. So I had this yarn on hand. I think I got it from Dollar Tree a long time ago. So I love me some Dollar Tree. And they already had these little fluff balls like on them. So I decided to cut those off and those were used for our snowman shooters, if you guys watched my previous video. And then with the remaining like really soft fluffy yarn, I made some snowballs. So you just wrap it like around either your fingers or I used cardboard. Uh, like tons of times using a string you want to tie in the center so that you create like two bundles of loops and then you're going to cut each and every loop and fluff up the ball if you don't like how it looks you can trim it down i am trying to make it as spherical as possible and i just repeated this process a ton of times I ended up using these for just table decorations, I believe just on our dessert table, but you could also use them for the snowman shooters. You could just have the kids play with them. If you have like a baby or a toddler and you don't want them to play with other sensory items, but um, I just really like how they turned out. I think they turned out really cute. As you guys saw in my last video, I did print out like menus and activities, papers and laminated stuff, but I wanted just to display the menu using this little Dollar Tree photo frame. And I thought this was a lot easier than trying to label each and every food and show how it fit the theme. I just thought it was nice to include all the pictures of the little characters and then the title of the food and then what it actually was like. You know, I put Elsa's flurries and then it was like labeled Otter Pops underneath. I did use this one Christmas tree prize that I made in my last video as decoration throughout the party until it was time to give it away. So that was, you know, an extra little added touch to our party. And then with the little strips of white paper from our snowflakes, I decided just to make like a basic like chain link looking decoration and I kind of did this one because I didn't want to waste the paper but two I was like they kind of look like snowballs so I just taped them up in our backyard the day of the party I could have done a better job at hiding the tape but at that point I just I don't think I cared we did use blue and purple streamers that I bought from the store to decorate the posts my friend uh, did this for me so I'm really grateful and we decorated the tables with like a spiral looking thing with the streamers as well so for my island I did take out like a big thing of paper to just kind of protect the island to protect the quartz but also make it easier for cleanup like once <laughs> Once everything is off of there, I can just roll it up and throw it away. So this was the night before I was getting everything ready. I put the trees out. I put the little hole punch snowflakes that you guys saw. And I even broke out some greenery and placed it like under the bowls. And I really like how that like added to the table. I also used some like pine cones. So I just added like as much Christmassy stuff as I could. And then you guys can see our kind of purple and blue themed table as well.
So this was the day of the party with all of the food out, my cupcakes that I made, the cake that I made. You guys can catch those videos if you want to check out my food video. I do want to mention like one thing I was I felt kind of bad about was because I was doing so much ahead of time, I felt bad that I was missing out on Aubrey like being totally surprised the morning of her birthday party by all these decorations. I know that some people stay up really late the night before and try to do everything all at once so that the next morning they can see their little one's reaction. And I knew that there was no way I could pull this all off in a night. So I decided to, you know, suck up those feelings and start two weeks ahead of time. And what I learned was that in some ways it was even better because every time I created something new, Aubrey got to savor and enjoy and react to that one thing rather than be overwhelmed. And it was so nice to be able to see her get excited about the willow curly table cover thing that I made. And then the balloon art she got to help out with and see how beautiful it ended up being. And, you know, whatever other decorations, once it was up and she woke up in the morning, she got to see them and was excited about that. So it wasn't just one big reveal where she might be overwhelmed. She got to have that type of reaction multiple times in the weeks leading up to her party. So it made me not feel so bad about not giving her that one big regular house to full-on party party elaborate house. In some ways, I kind of like it better. So if that encourages any of you guys to party prep ahead of time, I really suggest doing it. It makes it less stressful on you and your little one gets to be more and more excited about their party and give you those moments of like excitement and their reaction many times leading up to the party. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Comment down below what your favorite decoration was and subscribe if you guys are new. I would love to have you stick around and I will catch you guys in the next one. Woohoo! You've made it to the end of the video. If you didn't know already, every Monday and Friday you can find motherhood and lifestyle content on this channel. And since us moms have to do it all, that may mean yummy recipes, easy DIYs, mom hacks, cleaning and organization, or just a combo of everything. Please know that you are loved and you are made for greatness, and I will catch you in the next one.